Hello everybody and welcome on the Grounded Glasgow, your favorite Arma Holding Poketuba off this channel and I want to welcome you to a team builder for the Alola International Season 2 and I'm the Grounded Glasgow, your coach of the Lowland Nido Queens and this week we take on the St. Peter Guardians coached by Etsky. Uh, Etsky is one of the new members that joined the Alola International by Season 2. Uh, I do not know much about the person, not gonna lie. Uh, what I do know is actually that he has played in a league that an uh, A-Drive his fan league actually and became pretty close I believe that is what he told me so he's actually pretty good battler if he made it there um, so we should not take him lightly and his team is also pretty threatening um, so we're in season 2 right now I did a whole explanation in the draft analysis already also for the team members that we have so if you want to see why we have the picks that we have be sure to check that video out um, and now, actually, I will go over uh, the team of uh, my team. I will go over the team of my opponent. I will talk about the threats that he has, uh, and then I actually get into the spreads and whatnot that we, that you see in your, uh, on your screen right now, including the moves. So let's actually hop right into it. So looking at my opponent's team, you will also see that on your screen right now. Um, my friend Evsky, uh has the team of Infernape, Necrozma. Thunder Asterion, Delmice, Gudra, Free Marina, Mega Sceptile, Nido King, Braviary, Leveni, and Girder, and a Z Crystal user is gonna be Infernape. Um, so looking at this team, you of course see a number of threats already, of course. Like for example, Infernape, very fast with 108 base speed, very versatile also, has 104 uh, base stats in this attack, a special attack, so pretty threatening. Gets also a lot of coverage moves, so we need to watch out for that for sure. The Krosma, big threat overall as it always has been with Prism Armor. Can actually take some really good uh, super effective moves and then strike back. Um, can be for example a stored power set. Um, can be for example a uh, bulky rocker. So I'm going to those lines pretty, pretty deep, uh, depending on the Krosma's role once we actually see it in a battle. Uh, Thunderous Therion, base 101 speed of course, high special attack stat. Very versatile, has the Volt Absorb, of course, so it would be immune to all electric type moves to want to throw at it. Um, so that's pretty much that. The uh, Thunder Asterion also has a lot of coverage options because it's very versatile. For example, get Sludge Wave, um, Focus Blast, Grass Knot, something like those. Lines. So we need to really watch out for that one as well. Uh, then he has Delmice, which is one of his hazard removals right here. Delmice goes Grass type, really good typing in my opinion. Uh, can also be pretty freaking bulky with the Assault Vest. Um, and of course, the moves that I expect of Delmice comes is going to be Power Whip, Anchor Shot, Shadow Claw, and Rapid Spin, most likely. That is what I expect, but he may surprise me in the, in the end. Then he has a Gudra, we used that also pretty effective uh, for us in like last. Uh, well, in the TDL that was, we had a Gudra. We used that pretty effectively, and he has one, so we kind of know what it can do. Of course, very good with the Assault Vest as well. Can be Choice Packs, can be Choice Bandit, a Life Orb set may work for it. Or even a Weakness Berry, uh, like the Haban Berry to weaken Dragon type moves from Kyurem, for example. Then there's Primarina, the only Primarina set that is very threatening overall, in my opinion, is a Choice Specs Primarina. So that's that. Primarina, very big threat overall because there are limited switchings to a Primarina switch in. And I will explain it also in the team that you see in front of you right now. And he also has a Mega Sceptile, very fast mon, not be able to speed free that pretty much with any of my mons except if I force him to be Scarf. Uh, Mega Sceptile is indeed very fast, high special attack, can also abuse uh, his physical move pool like Earthquake, Stone Edge, Leaf Blade, something along those lines. Um, and then proceed maybe also for a move like uh, Shadow Claw, I believe it gets or something like that. Not completely sure, but I think it can get that. Um, depends what he is really scared of on my team. Um, then we have Nido King right here, very good Pokémon counterpart with, uh, of Nido Queen, of course. Um, Nido King, uh, very good mon with the sheer force ability and the life, or can just wreck three teams if he wants to. Um, can be also be physical with sheer force, so we do not need to sleep on uh, Nido King in the slightest. Can be a stealth rocker as well. And then, of course, we also have the opportunity for um, Nido King to be um, mixed as well, because mix is also an option, depends what he wants to hit. And then there's a Braviary, which can also be a Defogger. Um, 
But he also has a defy ability, so we need to watch out if we want a defog. Good my uh, mom if it wants to be choice scarf or choice bandit. Has some good stats in, in normal and flying. Um, also gets U-turn, roost, something like those lines, so we need to watch out for that. He has a Levani, and Levani can set up webs, which can be very threatening towards our team. Because if our team gets slowed down, we are pretty much in a downfall already. Because we um, because we need the speed actually this week to come through. And then last but not least, he has a girder, which is one of the few things that is very bulky enough to take a hit from, for example, Kurem. Um, uh, but further than that, can be a bulk up user because of the Violite, it is able to pull a bulk up, a bulk up more. Uh, often off than a uh, Conqueror would because Conqueror is normally most likely to carry Assault Fest and then it's not going to be able to use Bulk Up, so that's that. That's what I think. Uh, if I look at my opponent's team, what I expect him to bring, I want to say that Infernip comes for sure, Necrozma comes for sure, I expect Thunderous Therian, uh, I expect Delmice, not gonna lie, I see Primarina for sure, uh, and then the last two months are pretty much a toss up. I think Mega Sceptile and Gudra, if you need to ask me. Uh, just like full-on speed on his offensive bonds and whatnot. So let's actually get into our team right now uh, because we did not actually uh, discuss that yet. For the people who did not want wanted to watch the draft analysis, I will go quick over my team. You will not see it on the screen, but I will quick, quick go over it. So we have Curum Black, Mega Scissor, Arcanine, Florges, Uniclus, Gastrodon, Magneton, Shaman, Gligar, Heracross, and Licky Licky, and our Z user is Curum. So without that further instruction, let's actually get straight into the uh, into this team model, actually, because I think I kept you long enough so far. So first man you already saw for a couple of minutes right now is gonna be Curum Black, our frenzy. Holding the Choice Scarf this week with the Terra Hold ability, Rocket Ice Beam, Dragon Claw, Fusion Bolt, and Toxic. Um, 72 HP, 108 attack, 84 special attack, and 244 in speed. I will explain why we are scarfed with that much speed. We are that much speed to outspeed a Jolly Braviary if he wants to be a choice scarf variant. Um, so we can outspeed that with Curum as well. Uh, so we can outspeed that if we think he is scarfed and then obliterate it next turn with an Ice Beam, a Dragon Claw, or a Fusion Bolt. The 84 special attack is to actually 2 hit KO pretty much everything on his team, uh, which doesn't resist or is bulky enough, because the only two things that can take a uh, Ice Beam to the face are going to be Girder and the Crossma. The Crossma is dependent on the spread, of course, if it's physically defensive or specially defensive, that will, uh, that will actually be different from that. But Girder is one of the only monsters that can actually pretty much swap in safely, and a Primarina, of course, on the Ice Beam. But if Kyurem was, for example, an expert belt variant, then we could pretty much switch moves and whatnot and then obliterate it from there. The 108 attack right here with a naughty nature is actually for Kyurem to be able to um, KO, uh, to KO uh, Primarina with max HP. It is a roll though of uh, 95 to 100 or something percent. Uh, 110 if I'm correct. Uh, with Fusion Bolt. And that's pretty much good enough for me because the 72 in HP was a bit more for the bulk. And I and it was a pretty high roll that we got. We had like 81% chance to uh, Oko in from full with the Fusion Bolt. So that's that. Uh, so this Kyurem is really going to be great this game because he has limited switches to Kyurem. And for example, Gudra can take on an Ice Beam but cannot take on a Dragon Claw. Uh, Primarina can take a Fusion Bolt. Fusion Bolt will go through Thunder, Asterion's Volt of Sword and Mega Septon's Lightning Rod. So that's great as well. So Kyurem, very stable mod in this game, and I am really proud that I could use it now. Let's actually hop into our second mod right here. It's going to be Jello, our Reuniclus right here, holding the leftovers with the Magic Guard ability. Rocking Psyshock, Shock, Calm Mind, Recover, and Toxic. 220 HP, 132 Defense, 52 Special Attack, and 104 Special Defense with a Bold Nature. Um, the, 220 special, uh, the 220 HP was actually what we needed in combination with the Bulk. Because the 132 uh, defense with the bolt nature allows Reuniclus to take 55% max from a life orb, max attack, um, Jolly Infernape. Um, that's what I expect him to bring actually because life orb can be a huge threat. Z move is also an option but I think that um, the life orb is also very likely so I wanted to prep for that as well. So we are able to take on the U-turn from Infernape and further it does not have much to hit us with actually. Uh, we have the 52 special attack to ensure a two shot on Gudra if it's max HP assault fast. 
And then also we have the one off for special defense to be able to take um, less than half from a uh, Primarina uh, Choice Specs Moonblast. So if we're at plus one with Calm Mind, we are able to take on a Moonblast and go on from there. So Reuniclus has a Psy Shock to indeed hit Monster like Gudra and just pretty much everything that we need. Um, we need to wait for Delmice to be weakened or gone at least for Reuniclus to come in freely. Um, so we have Calm Mind is set up, Recover to regain health, and Toxic is there to in, in case uh, of wearing down mods like uh, Delmice indeed. If need be, and Necrozma, uh, because Necrozma can play the Calm Mind game versus Reuniclus and go Calm Mind toe to toe uh, with Reuniclus, but I wanted to avoid that and I put a timer on him because he cannot do that to us because of the Magic Guard, so that's great. Sorry, we needed something off a drink. Um, so that's pretty much Reunicons right here. Um, so very good spread in my opinion. Can take up pretty much a number on this team. And I think that Jello is going to be great in this battle versus uh, this Etsuki right here. So the third Pokemon on the squad is actually going to be Squishy. Our guests are done East because I already mentioned I was going to run that. Win an Assault Fest. And this should actually be... Um, this should actually be Storm Drain, I'm going to lie. Yeah, this should have been Storm Drain. Uh, we have Storm Drain because uh, Primarina limits Primarina stabs, of course, so that's great. Can get a boosted special attack from that. So with the Assault Fest, I feel more comfortable switching into, uh, for example, Nido, Nido King and such, because that is what this is designed for. Uh, squishy Rocks, uh, Earth Power, Clear Smog, Ice Beam and Scald, 244 HP, 20 defense, 52 special attack, 156 special defense and 36 in speed. 36 of speed is to speed creep a Delmice because if you speed creep Delmice we can get uh, first and then get maybe a Scald from an Ice Beam and maybe get a Burn slash Freeze if need be or some huge damage. Um, the 156 of special defense uh, combined with the 244 HP is going to be enough to take on Nido King for a maximum of 35%. We're also able to tank Grass Knots from Life Orb Infernape and then from Thunder Rastarian. Um, HP Grass is also going to be walled for this as well. We just cannot live Sceptile pretty well, but this is what you expect from such a high base one. Uh, 52 special attack was actually to do some uh, a good amount of damage um, towards pretty much the Delmice and ensure some good damage on the uh, on the Inferno and the Nido King with Skull slash Ice Beam. Clear Smog is to get rid of setup sweepers, for example, if we if we make a Sceptile. Wants to set up and I can miraculously lift a hit. I can clear smog it. The cross mod, if it wants to set up, I can clear smog. Inferno, I can, I can clear smog. Girder, because I outspeed that as well. And then, for example, also Graviary. Uh, so that's going to be great. And then we have the Earth Power just in case uh, to hit Inferno and Nido King a bit harder if you do not want to risk the Skull slash Ice Beam. That's going to be our Assault Fest uh, Gastrodon right here. Very good set, in my opinion. Gonna be great to take on the Nido King, in my opinion. So let's actually see how it turns out and jump into our fourth one right here. Fourth one is actually gonna be Cupid the Floor, just right here. Uh, Rocky Flowerville with leftovers with, with Wish Protect, Toxic Moonblast, 240 HP, 116 defense, 28 special attack, and 124 in special. Uh, so come on. 116 defense, 124 special defense with a bold nature. Uh, the 240 HP with 124 special defense ensures that we can take on Thunder Hysterians is Thunderbolt as well if it's life or uh, 28 special attack. Must to do 20, uh, must to, I believe 30% max towards uh, a minimal, I mean 30% minimal to Gudra but Moonblast. Toxic is to wear down certain walls, of course, which protect to heal the team. And then we also have the. Uh, 116 defense to take on uh, fire punches, flare blitzes, or something like that from Infernape as well. That's pretty good in my opinion. Pretty standard set that I think it will work, which bounces us straight into our fifth mon as well. Uh, I think Florge is going to be a great cleric though. Uh, not too passive, uh, not bulky, I'm, I would figure, so that, that's good for me. Fifth ball right here is going to be Hercules, our Heracross right here. Holding a Cherry Scarf as well with the Guts ability. Or a Close Combat, Mega Horn, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. Um, with 44 HP, 236 attack, 8 defense, and 220 in speed. The reason why I decided Guts over Moxie is because I do not expect Heracross to stay in 
pretty much longer it just comes in claims potentially a kill or their huge damage and then switch out so moxie not that relevant and guts will actually help us in case we um, get status or whatnot for example by thunderous T's, uh thunder wave the cross was toxic um the is toxic if he is not uh, assault fast a something like those lines of course so we have close combat mega horn for overall stat mega horn does tremendous amounts of damage towards the crossma Close Combat does great versus Gudra. Um, Close Combat is good versus pretty much everything. It does not resist. Stone Edge is to hit Thunder Resterian if need be. And Earthquake is to hit everything else that is on the ground. So the 44 HP and the 8 in defense are a bit more bulk. 236 attack is pretty much all that we needed. And then we have the 220 in speed to outspeed Scarf Braviary again. Because Scarf Braviary is most likely a ring he could bring. Show Scarf Heracross, so we run Dual Scarf this week. I think it's gonna pay off pretty well. Uh, so let's see just how it turns out, and let's get to our last one right here. Last one right here is gonna be Tetsu, our Mega Scissor, holding the Scissor right, of course, with Technician ability. Rocket Bullet Punch, U Turn, Roost, and Defog. 176 in HP, 112 attack, 12 defense, 68 in special defense, and 140 in speed with a adamant nature. Uh, the 140 in speed is actually to uh, speed creep a modest free marina so we can outspeed and maybe roost up or something um, if we can switch into a moon blast we can defog if need be bullet punch or u-turn depending on how low he is and then we have the uh, 68 in special defense and 176 in hp to help us versus septile free marina thunder hysteria necrozma all kind of things like that 112 um the 112 EVs in attack with the animate nature ensures us to do good amounts of damage with Bullet Punch and U-Turn. I believe Bullet Punch has a chance to actually do 45% minimal towards Primarina if he's not max HP. Uh, if he is, it will of course do a bit less. So it's going to be great a late game bond which can Bullet Punch away. And then we have also the 12 in defense because that's pretty much what was left. Uh, so this is actually the team we are going to bring for later on today in the match. So... I hope we will actually pu uh, punch through and uh, claim a victory to start off great in the Alumni International. And I want to thank you all so much for watching to this team builder. Uh, and be sure to check out the battle of later on today. So, I'm with Robert Glasgow. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video that I'm going to make. I will see you next time, guys. And I'm out.